is the abbreviation for City Opportunity Projects on Education. And um, it's one of the many projects of the City FM Foundation, the corporate social responsibility wing of City FM and City TV. Now, COP is a merit based scholarship scheme for um, students, for tertiary students, and we open it at the end of every academic year. The City FM Foundation, through the generosity of listeners and viewers, has since 2014 been supporting some brilliant but financially disadvantaged students to pursue their tertiary education through the City Opportunity Project on Education, otherwise known as COPE. One of them is this young lady, Abigail Simon, a second-year student at the University for Professional Studies. School had not reopened at the time she agreed to speak to us, so we visited her at her home in Manhia, in the Greater Accra region. After primary school, Abigail moved to the Accra Girls Senior High School where she was a business student. However, she said with no hope of going to the university, because of her poor background, a friend spoke to her about COPE. I got to know about COPE through a friend. I told her that I had no chance of going to the university and she was like, because of my results and then we being friends in school, she, she, she would try to help. So I was, she was always talking to me, then she was like, she applied for a scholarship and she had it. By the time she told me, I, that was the deadline. She was like, I should just try and write everything on time, send it. So I did everything on that day, it was on a Saturday. And I, had to, I got to cope, I got to City FM around 11 p.m. My mom didn't even believe it. She, when I was telling her that I was sending the letter, I was like, we've lost hope. She was like, I should just stay in the house. Let's just pray that we g I'll get something to do. And even in this hood, the only thing you get to do is teaching. And the teaching, your pay will be like 100 students a, a month. So I was just calculating that when did I get 1,000, 2,000 to, to, to go to school? Was, I lost hope. She recounts how she felt when she received the news that she had qualified for the scholarship. It was like a dream come true because I, I didn't expect to go. I didn't even, when I started schooling from primary, I didn't even know that I would get to SHS. So God being so good, when I went to SHS, I knew that was my end. I can't continue. But I really wanted to continue. So I thought I had to stay in the house and work for some time before I can get money to go to school. My dad was even like, why did I choose UPS whilst there was um, Legon? I was like, our teachers were saying UPSC uh, is good for business students and all. That's why I also went in to apply to UPSC. I said, no. I didn't even know that I would get there. I didn't know I would get there. Abigail's mother, Elizabeth Nomo, a pastor, says Coop has lifted a huge burden off their family. Naska semaya di oko SS no na e hona ke ye kakra eti eti mi bua mani e wi SS no ti o wi ye no ni ma ma ye tawi ti tezi bi na ye ya so de wasi ke ni ye ti wa na ko bai ti ko bai no si o krofon na o ka sa o be bua no no o no mu fre no no ti o mu si adi chinya ombra e no e ya de bi a e nwonwa for your family no because family no mono, I yet they say will be better in your university. In the face of all the challenges Abigail faces, as she studies accounting and finance, she is determined to give off her best. She says it's her only option. When I go to school, I I knew that I had to really learn hard so that Coop will continue to sponsor me and I'll, I'll make it to the end. But it wasn't easy. I wasn't even having a phone. And all that you have to learn to will be in the form of PDF and all. So I had to go to my friends to learn. Sometimes to, it's like, they'll be like, they are going home. 
and all. So I have to make sure that I pay attention in class. So when I'm in class and anyone is talking, I wouldn't I wouldn't listen to that person because if maybe who knows I wouldn't get to learn that thing again. So I have to make sure I get it in class. It wasn't easy. I got to school. It wasn't easy. So I was struggling with French. <laughs> Because French, you don't understand it, and then there was no book to help. We, we didn't even have slides, no one could teach you. <laughs> well, I don't know. After a hearty interview, it was time to part company and meet another corporate beneficiary. We then moved to Kaswa in the central region to meet Emilia Otabel. Emilia, like most of the beneficiaries, had her own story to share. I was once in Ojobi, Gumba Ojobi, a village around Winiba. I was there with my grandma. We had two, three boys and one girl. So I was staying with my grandma until I completed the searches before I moved to my brother here. So just because I wanted to do some, uh, somebody great in future and there's no money in the house, I decided to stay with somebody so that maybe the person will be paying my school fees, me to be helping her small, small. So I moved to Ashamai. I was there for a good three years. But something happened, so I decided to come back to where my brother is. And when I came to Things were so difficult for him because he lost his job and he's having two children. Faced with this difficulty and her brother's inability to take care of her education, Emilia resorted to selling sachet water. The initial plan, she says, was to save enough from the sachet water business and further her education. I had to sell pure water because there's no option anywhere. So that is the water that I was selling. Let me, let me, let me say... A day, I can even sell four bags of sachet water. That four bags, your profit will be 10 cities. Because the profits from the trade was nothing to write home about, Emilia could not save enough to even buy the university forms. A friend had to do that for her. Even after she secured the university forms, the next hurdle was how she could raise enough money to pay for her tuition at the University of Cape Coast while she's currently a student studying business administration. Me getting admission, I don't know where to go because there's nobody around to help me. So I have, a, I have one father, his name called uh, Mr. Counselor. I used to go to him. He used to help me small, small, with small money, sometimes food. I used to bring it home. And one day I was there, when I got the, the admission from uh, the admission, I was there. And I, I told him, Mr. Counselor, something has happened though. And he said, what? I said, I've gotten the admission, but no money to go to school. And he said, have you been listening to CTFM? This is Counselor Isaac, as Amelia calls him. On the day of our visit, he was happy his little push had made a difference in Amelia's life. Now, if someone was needed a time like this, you should be listening the city FM, so that if anything, God can clear for your heart too. And the same time, if you don't touch your heart, you can't make it. Medina Zungu Junction. We've come to this area to meet Savia Koda, one of the many beneficiaries of Coop. He's a second year student at the University for Professional Studies, studying accounting and finance. He lives here with his sister, Rebecca Koda, and a few tenants. Sylvia Koda completed a Pando Senior High School in the Volta region with excellent grades. But he needed more than that to go to the university. He came from a family of farmers, but the proceeds from the farming activities were not enough to move him to the next level on the educational ladder. My father is a farmer, my mother is a trader, so we had no choice than to farm in order to have a living. So, yeah, so we do go to the farm, having some crops, maize, cassava, 
yeah, we can come back and come and sell it at the market. Yeah, to just raise some money for foodstuffs and um, uh, uh, the education as well. Xavier's sister, Rebecca, 25 years, was herself forced to abandon school after completing senior high school because of a lack of funds, something she never wanted her younger brother to go through. She then moved to Accra from the Votri region to find a job and take care of her brother. She landed a job as a waitress in a restaurant, but her salary could only do so much. Yeah, he completed his secondary school in Pandu, in the Volta region, and he, he passed out very well. And um, we have no money to further his education, so we heard about COP and we need to apply and it was really, really helpful. COP, it was a dream come true because when he applied for uh, University of uh, Professional Studies, Accra, and the uh, admission uh, bills came out, it was <laughs> that day I cried because when I look at my left, right, back and front, there was no one to help because my mother had no work doing and my father too before he died. So there was nothing to look up to or to solve for his education. I used to, I used to have plans of going to school, furthering my education, but with no help, I, I don't think I can. If I get a help from anybody, I would like to uh, go to uh, any business school because in my SEJs I offered business and my dream was to be an accountant. City FM scholarship scheme has helped put students in some of the country's public tertiary institutions. The University of Ghana, Lagon. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The University of Cape Coast. The University for Professional Studies are just a few of them. We currently have about 65 students benefited and are still benefiting from COPE. 20 have completed their tertiary education and are currently working, thanks to COPE. Now we have about 45 students who are on the scheme currently. This year we are hoping to take 25 more students to make it a total of 70 students. After speaking to the students who are currently on the scholarship scheme, it was time to meet some former beneficiaries of COPE. Our road trip took us to Boahini Krum, a small town near Otukwejo and in Sawem in the eastern region. Residents here are predominantly farmers. We've come here to meet Timothy Anku, a former co-beneficiary who's now a teacher in the school, the Boahini Krum MA Primary and Kindergarten. We have what we also call magnetic force. Okay, do you know a magnet? Do you know a magnet? Uh -huh. um, I grew up at Rara. Rara is in the Volta region, an Akan community. Um, I started basic education at Rara Anglican Primary and then later went to JHS, EP, which is also situated at Rara. And then from there, I went to SHS at KJB, Asatu Senior High School. It's also situated at KJB, which is also an account community at the Volta region. And then from there, I moved to Medina. From Medina, I came here. My mother, after um, retirement, my mother was at Medie. Uh -huh. So I came down here and um, with the, uh, you know, the college is um, Presbyterian College of Education, which is situated at um, Akropong. So it's also in the eastern region. So I decided to, you know, be in the eastern region to help, just as Hope helped me. And I like to be in the village too. Timothy, however, wants to be a soldier in future. 
In all my life, I, I may say from SHS, I, also, I always wanted to be a soldier. I had passion for it. I wanted to be a soldier. But because I applied three times and I couldn't get it, that's the reason why I'm here. But all the same, I love this work. After our meeting with him, Timothy insisted that we visited his farm. He says he was given the land by the chief as a source of motivation for him, since most teachers refuse postings to schools in deprived communities like Boahini Krum. There is also Philemon Dabra, formerly a student at the University of Ghana, Legon, who studied medical laboratory science. At the time of this interview, he was doing his national service at the chest clinic of the Kolibu Teach in the hospital. My mom was sick and she had a surgery and so things were so bad and my dad works, he has um, a chemical shop in a village and in that village there are five other chemical shops so the competition is very high and so funds were 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 so like funds were low and it was tough for the family and so i was even about to just defer and go to school the next year or yeah so that i could find a job and work but then that's when my mom head of coop and then we applied and i got in I'm just grateful to God that I was able to get onto COPE because it really helped me. I mean, um, they were paying for my fees and then accommodation. And so it really made life simpler because year after year, the prices increased. The prices of fees, the prices of the hostels increased dramatically. And so if I wasn't on it, it would have really been a tough time for me. Every year, we get support from our general listeners friends of the station, as well as some corporate organizations. This year, COPE is asking for your support for some brilliant but needy students. Your contribution would pay for their tuition, accommodation, and also give them a stipend to help cater for some of their expenses at school. Please send your contributions to the mobile money number 550 006 Checks should be written in the name The City FM Foundation. Alternatively, bring your kind donations to the front desk of City FM and City TV behind the Adabraka Police Station. Visit citynewsroom.com or call 0550-900-006 or 0302-226-013 to find out more. I want to say a very big thank you to City FM and City TV for bringing up the idea of COOP to support the likes of me and many others to give us a quality education. And I really appreciate it. And God richly bless City FM and TV. Thank you very much. Because of what COOP has done for me, I, I really want to help. Should I make it, I will help those that don't have so that they also get there. Cool. It's real. Cope is real. It's very real. <laughs>